Hey, it's Dr. Cheryl Meyer. Um, the sun's setting. I'm like, oh, I gotta get my notebook out. Look at that. Ah, it's so beautiful. I'll do pano, panoramic. Oh my gosh. I'll have to find a way to watch the sunset while I talk to you guys. I don't know how that's going to work unless... Oh, I can look at it while I'm talking to you guys in reverse, not in person. Oh, so pretty. Okay, so I was going through this thing. Imagine. And it's just, you know, they say necessity is the mother of invention. And so... Um, the universe keeps giving me these universal problems so that I can help you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so happy right now though because I feel better about handling, well, like handling the situation that came up in life. So as soon as I get the solution, I want to give it away, you know? All right, so uh, this is talking about you have, I was, it was great because after I was finding the solution, I listened to the power of now again. And in the power of now, Eckhart Tolle was talking about these same exact concepts. And so I'll just say how he said it, and then I'll go into how it showed up in my life. We're talking about when you face a situation and what happens is, oh, I'm always saying, what happens is, Sometimes we feel like we have to be loyal to um, toxic behavior because that's what we got in childhood, you know? And that's what we're used to, that's what's familiar. Familiar is like family. And so we stay with what's familiar instead of letting it go. Uh, we stay loyal because we feel like, you know, you're a bad girl, you're a bad boy if you let go of these people and let them drown in their own toxicity, you know? They think you're bad and so, they genuinely think you're bad because you're not rescuing them. And it's like, you don't realize, I'm saying this to the toxic people, not like they're all toxic. There's lots of good and bad in all of us, the shadow side. And, but if they're continuously bathing in toxicity for themselves, it's like they don't realize their handcuffs are, you know, I'm like, go like this, untie the bow, it's a slip knot, and set yourself free. And when they believe they're stuck in these situations, and when we believe they are, well, so they believe they are. And if we see them and we love them, you know, it's like if, if it's my brother or my mom or my sister or my dad or whatever, we believe them because they believe themselves and we love them. So we see it on their face that they believe it. But if we go down with them, then um, we just drown in that toxicity with them and we don't elevate ourselves and show them that there's a different path. Um, so, uh, what, what, you can do that if you want, like, I don't recommend it because if you do that, you're enabling them, you're teaching them that all of us have to be stuck in toxic behavior and you're making, yeah. hi, you're making, um, excuses, excuses as well. And you're buying their excuses and you're giving validation to their excuses. Their excuses are um, BS. I can't remember what the other, someone had a psychological definition of what BS was. It's, it was really funny. I can't remember, but you guys know what I'm talking about. And uh, whatever, they're, uh, they're full of it, um, but they don't realize it. So it's like not putting someone down for choosing to be in toxicity. They don't realize they're choosing. It's some, oftentimes it's unconscious behavior. So, um, what Eckhart Tolle was saying is that, uh, so now we're going into some of what he says in The Power of Now, he says, to complain is, uh, it's non-acceptance of what is. So if I'm complaining about something, but I'm staying in it, you know, it's, I'm not, I'm not accepting what is, and it doesn't mean I have to stay in it. There's, he said, there's always some kind of negative charge when you're complaining because you're making yourself a victim. I'm not a victim of anything. Well, I mean, I can't, something can happen. We're all like experiencing this global thing, you know, or if you see this in the future, it was in our past. Uh, and so, um, but you don't want to make yourself a victim. I'm always about, you guys know, 
I'm always about let's learn how to empower ourselves. And um, so either, he, okay, his three options were either remove yourself from the situation. You know, I don't have to be in this toxic relationship, uh, bye bye Or um, take action. So like change your behavior, speak up about it, um, or change your behavior in that like, whenever we're in a relationship, I talk about this in a lot of videos, but whenever we're in a relationship, there's a dance that's going on. And if you keep doing the same dance, they'll keep doing the same dance. If you change your dance, then they can either move to that place of higher consciousness with you, or they can just stay in their toxicity. Like, um, but if you keep going down to the toxic dance or whatever you want to call it, the dance of destruction, <laughs> the dance of, yeah, Kali? I don't know if that's the god of destruction. I don't know. The goddess. Anyway, uh, so you can either remove yourself, take, sh take action, change, uh, and change your behavior, or um, totally accept what is. And it's like, if someone keeps taking their trash and dumping it on your bed that you sleep on, you know, or dumping it on your front lawn, and um, it's like to totally and this person says they're your best friend, <laughs> to totally accept what is, is to, um, to keep, um, again, enabling that kind of behavior, saying it's okay that you do that. I'm, I'll keep making excuses for you. Uh-uh, you don't have to make excuses for people. There are reasons why people uh, stay unconscious or stay in toxic behavior. Um, but I heard, I heard, um, I don't know if you've heard of, uh, Esther Hicks, but I heard her talking. If you know who she is, then you know who she is. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But I heard her talking and she, her example for this is like, look, if you really like keeping things clean, you know, in your life, high vibrations and stuff like that, and you know how to use a vacuum cleaner every day by connecting yourself with God, by connecting yourself with Christ, with, with um, love, divine love, you know, and your friend wants help or something and you go and you go into their toxicity and you unplug your vacuum cleaner because they don't have a plug because they're not plugged in to divine love, then you're just going to drown with them and your vacuum cleaner doesn't work when it's not plugged in. So you have to take responsibility for making sure that you are plugged in to source, to divine love, to, you know, like I do a practice every day of um, doing yoga or uh, most days, most every day, or um, and walking up here in nature you know, because it's so beautiful and it connects me back and quiets my mind. I didn't know. Or And also I go into silence for this exercise that I'm committed to for 45 minutes or an hour every day. But it doesn't have to be that. Yours is your own path. Don't follow mine. Your intuition will lead you to the best path. But, um, but if you stay with a practice, like that wouldn't work if I just did that once a week. It would do something. Like when people come into therapy with me once a week, they're continuing to look at a pattern and work on it um, and it does accrue it's wonderful because it keeps making them conscious and able to observe their problems instead of just being victims of their problems and staying unconscious and what happens is sometimes again what happens is we'll find people that are familiar to our family and so they might be dysfunctional and just allow us to keep treating ourselves with disrespect and they treat themselves with disrespect so they allow us to treat them with disrespect and um, you're not challenged to go any higher and then it's just like oh yeah I love these people because they chase after me and they uh, want to be with me and they like me just as I am they accept me just as I am well if you keep dumping trash on your own front yard or in your own bed you know or um, whatever and other people don't know that they deserve higher they're worth higher too then it's like a lot of people treating each other like trash and then lying to each other and betraying each other and cheating on each other and I don't know it's it's weird because it's it's behavior that I felt like I left a long long time ago but I was introduced to it in a different way on on and I don't mean to be like a snob like oh I'm above all that because I had these like I I still grew up with a narcissist and so the narcissist says it's your job to keep cleaning up all my crap and it's and it's your job to keep pleasing me and when you learn how to be a pleaser you're pleasing the wrong kinds of people and the wrong patterns there's no way if you're going to please anything please divine love like surrender to this higher calling surrender to high vibes surrender to 
daring to be something more than you were before, you know, daring to be your highest self, to quiet your mind and listen to your higher self, to um, challenge yourself. What, if you have, what do you have to lose? That's, that's on like, I got nothing to lose, you know, um, because I've, as you, I, I heard this in a different video the other day, is as you make the choices to take action, Oh, George MacDonald said this in the 1800s as well in his books. But as you choose to take action courageously in one choice, um, it will open the door and give you the strength you need to take courage in the next choice, in the next choice. And, and so you keep going up. And so this brings me into the other part that I had on my piece of paper from before was we go on a ladder. And I was bringing this up in one of the other videos uh, a couple of videos ago. Uh, I won't try to think of what the name is now, but um, it's a ladder. And as if you keep stepping up, as you step up, then other people behind you can step up as well. As you don't, it's kind of like we, um, we stop the flow of inspiring the people that are below us on this ladder. It's just a ladder of consciousness. It's not a ladder to measure yourself by your ego. But it's important. Your life is your love to this universe your conscious life and you're choosing to take responsibility for these things and treat people and treat yourself with love shows other people and teaches other people that it's possible to do this and it's possible to heal and it's possible to not just live by your passions and your lower natures I, it's important to be passionate don't get me wrong i love passion and that's what like i play my guitar and i live life and look at the pink over here look at this if i didn't have passion I wouldn't have all this energy behind all these actions that I've taken recently in my life. Um, so it's important, but not just letting your immediate passions of, oh, I want to go do this and use this person and use that and steal from them and rob from them and make empty promises and blah, 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 blah. Oh, don't get me started. You know, that is about letting the lower part of you direct your life, your ego instead of your higher self, you can observe those passions and say, which ones do I want to act on? Which ones are wise? Which ones are loving? Which ones um, keep me aligned with my integrity? If you choose to live a life of integrity, if you don't choose to live in a life in of integrity and truth and honesty and following through with what you promise, either in your words or your actions before, then you're going to keep assuming that other people aren't trustworthy and you're going to keep finding an untrustworthy worthy world because that's how karma works, you know? And so I'm encouraging you, like, uh, you will keep seeing honest people and genuine people as they must have a trick, they must be dishonest, they're gonna take something from me because you are doing that to people and you're doing it to yourself by lying to yourself and not offering yourself a higher standard of living. I'm just saying, that's all of us. This is, I talk to myself, you know, and it's not a judgment, it's not a judgment, it's just getting wisdom in there and going, okay, how long do I wanna do this? And, and I'm putting this out there, it's so awesome, thank God. I mean it. This is like a line from Star Wars. Think the maker. Because I'm like, okay, see video R2D2. Like maybe I'll put that in the, in the hashtag. So like whenever there's another toxic person that I have in my life that chooses toxicity as their go-to behavior, then I can just be like, see video R2D2. And I mean, I, there might be a lot of R2D2s, but that's just what I thought of right now. Um, so that you can see that you are responsible for your own toxic behavior and i'm not going to complain about your behavior i'm just not any anything unaligned must go i'm not going to choose to keep going down and trying to drown myself to pull people out and be loyal to their toxicity because they don't have to be loyal to it and when i'm loyal to their toxicity then i'm teaching them that they have to be loyal to it or you know that they're stuck and i'm stuck oh you know and I'm not making fun because I was stuck like three hours ago. No, it wasn't three hours. It was yesterday. So, and I'm sure I will be stuck in another pattern for a while. Always, always in Montreal, I learned that when you are, when you feel like you're stuck, look at what you've glued yourself to. I always go, I always do like, I always do it like um, Alice in Wonderland. Instead of you have to have this pill and then you grow bigger and then you can climb out of the situation you're in. I'm like, no, you can just lick your hand, you know, like do something you already have. You have the ability. You don't have to have a magic ring or a magic lamp or the magic carpet or whatever. You just, all you have to do is 
realize it's your imagination that's stopping you. You've invested in these old thoughts that say, I have to stay stuck. Oh, I want you guys to see the pink. And then, uh, oh, oh, the sun is, ah, oh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> um, anyway, oh my gosh. Be in the now, be in the now. I was so angry the other day and then I got so mad at myself for getting angry. But angry, I told you guys, right? Angry is mad and mad backwards is damn. And so when you're angry, and it, I didn't see that in the moment, you know, when you're angry, it's like you're invested in that person giving a damn. You're mad at them, you're invested in them giving a damn. Caring, caring more than they're showing that they care. You care more, you care more for yourself walk away, let him go, not just let them go, understand the situation, observe the situation, accept what is, instead of, I made up stories like, oh, this person's only doing this because of this and this and this, and they promised they'll change, and they said all these blah, 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 blah. <laughs> aw, aw, I mean, I feel so much love for people, and I hate that they think they're stuck, but if I believe them, then I'm just agreeing with them that they're stuck and they're not stuck. They only see themselves as stuck, just like I saw myself as stuck. Unglue myself, let that go, and what was I, what was I just saying about, um, uh, I can't remember what, where I was with that because I, <laughs> Okay. Oh yeah. I'm invested in them giving a damn. I'm invested in them caring more. And it's like, that's all we can do when we're a child. We're down here. We're waiting for the parent up here, down here, up here. And so we're waiting for our parents to change because we have no other recourse as a child. And so when we have that same familiar experience, your logical mind doesn't know what year it is right now. It doesn't know how old you are right now. It just has that feeling state and that feeling state takes you back to when you were a child, when you felt that way. And when you felt that way, you were pretty helpless. And so our brain just says, I'm helpless. I'm feeling this way. I'm helpless. I have to treat others this way and I have to let them treat me this way. And I don't, and I have to be loyal to this. No, let them go, like whatever, you know? Um, Okay, and so I drew this thing. Let's go into this for a second. Maybe I'll take a picture of this too and put it on the screen as I talk about it now because I have um, this, outer, this outer line right here. So we're gonna be going in into this middle part. Is, is, is in your life, if I put maybe addictions are that outer thing. Um, these are the things that keep you from this inner stillness. And what I was saying is when I do my practices every day, they keep me in a place of how it's, it's more fluid and easier for me to go back to this center place of silence. And it's really hard for me. So like, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have these practices. Um, I'll give you an example of how I was taught by the Native American, the, the Apache, um, Apache man that taught, not, not the one, not Red Elk, but um, this Apache man grandfather that taught, Tom that taught me because I went to these classes. I won't go into that because I don't recommend it for everybody. But anyway, is that if you do this long meditation, okay, there's like this 20 minute meditation where you relax your whole body and you cover your body with this light and you're, I don't know, you're all balanced and all calm. And then you take a deep breath at the end. And so what you do is they teach you how to anchor this breath with the, um, I ought to reference the book. This is by Tom Brown. I forgot what the name of the book is. It's a white book with a Anyway, it's, I think, one of his main first books. But, because um, I don't want to take his stuff without referencing him, but um, I'm not trying to take it. I'm just describing how I learned how to do this myself. Is So then what you can do is you just take the breath and it's anchored in to that meditation. And so automatically, entrained, it's like entrained. When I take that deep breath, it takes me back to this stillness that I have after 
a long meditation. And if I do the meditation like every three days or every four days, then I can just do the breath and the breath will take me back to that quiet state, quiet my mind so I can see clearly, see above the situation, observe what's happening and not get caught up in it and get all triggered. And when, when you get triggered and you act out in anger, which, you know, sorry, I already apologized because it burns up your etheric vitality. You have, when you think of give us this day our daily bread, you have energy that causes you, you know, it helps you through life to deal with these problems, but you burn it up really fast when you get angry or jealous or toxic behavior or other things. I'll talk about them another time because it's going to go dark and I want to get back. I have, uh, anyway, I, I have a place. Like, I, I won't point out where it is, but it might be right over there, right by it. Anyway, I won't say. Okay. Um, so, uh, so this, this outer, so what I'm teaching you right now, besides um, what we talked about before, which I already forgot because I'm, I'm just sort of streaming. I'm streaming right now. I'm live streaming. <laughs> Higher consciousness. Um, but what I'm talking about is how to get in the centered state so that you can see things clearly, so that you can be so grounded and so centered and so in and aligned with love and plugged in that you can make good decisions for yourself and you can let go of toxic be people and toxic behavior and you can feel powerful and empowered in yourself because you're connected to divine love. You have your higher purpose and you're aligned with your purpose here, which is to love and give back and whatever, you know, whatever you find, I'm not saying it is for everybody. I just think it is, but you know, love looks different. It doesn't mean like I have to wear like mother Teresa hat or something, you know, <laughs> it's like loving can be uh, like a good plumber or a good drummer uh, keeps the beat, you know, or a poet or an artist or whoops. Oh no, I touched the Oompa Loompa button. <laughs> I knocked the screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I just, the Oompa Loompa button is when it made me turn yellow in one of my videos and I was wearing this bright orange shirt. <laughs> oh, whatever. Okay. Um, okay, so there's these outer, outer, oh, that's, that's my personal stuff. <laughs> like, don't look at that. This is my journal outer it, look at the book i love it i just found it in my closet because sometimes i'll buy journals when they're on sale and then i'll grab one just decomposition and like my flying horse oh oh more personal stuff all right <laughs> okay so uh so uh, maybe addictions and stuff are on the outer and they keep you away from this inner silence of hearing your inner voice your deep your higher oh it's so pretty on the other side now too look Oh, you can't tell. Those are all pink. It's so gorgeous. Gorgeous, I tell you. All right, so addictions. And then um, the line inside of that. So if you think of um, how to get inside of that is um, efforting with your job and your status and your money and your short-term fleeting things that make you feel powerful or worth it. Oh my gosh, I have to turn this brightness down. Oh, there. Oh, I got it. Okay, so when you um, are trying to do everything through effort, I kept trying to, like, I had to do what I could to get this, this living situation sorted that I, I was trying to work out. And I kept efforting and efforting, and then I had to surrender and be like, all right, you know, I'll do my part. You tell me what your part is. Tell me what I need to do, and I'll do my part. But through efforting or trying to get a relationship to work through efforting instead of accepting what is, no, look, this person doesn't want to put in the effort. Goodbye. There are people that do want to put in the effort, that want to show up and face their fears and um, not buy into their victim mentality and all that stuff, you know, because they learned better by doing the courageous thing in front of them and by seeing that they are worth more and you're worth having a good relationship. And so um, you can try things by efforting and status and all that stuff. And that's like the second line in, okay? And then inside of that, I put Netflix. <laughs> um, but as you're kind of in um, a more surrendered place, it just, that's just what came to me because you're, you're at least more relaxed, you know? You're in a zone where good ideas could come to you. 
Um, and my classes were like that too. When I kept ODing on classes, I was learning classes, 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 spiritual classes, you know, and um, something else I put numbing, sometimes numbing. Oh, not your addictions, but a different kind of, like a healthy version of numbing. Like if I walked eight hours a day here, instead of facing my life, it's still exercise and it's connecting me with nature, but it's, I'm doing it and it's sort of a numbing action. And like the first two hours might get me into a good idea state, but after that, I'm gonna switch again. After that, um, then it's, it's like um, counteractive, right? And so, um, and then, but it's something, there's something to it, something to that. Like if I go roller skating for two hours, it gets me in the flow and then these other ideas come. And so it's not like a level of, it's just, excuse me, I didn't name it yet. Maybe I'll name it in the description. You guys read my descriptions if you want. Like there, it's like a whole hour of therapy just in the description sometimes. Sometimes I'm just like, ah, watch the video, you know? Other times I'm like, oh my gosh, I thought of all this stuff after because I was walking after and more stuff came to me. And so I write more in the description. So inside of that, the next circle inside of this is um, signs and synchronicities and so I would the last video I did was all these signs and they it might look like I'm just looking at making up things you know I was talking about t-shirts and the t-shirts that I was seeing but that's what my inner mind my intuition was telling me to look at because a little kid looked at my t-shirt and so that's what it was telling me that the answers were coming that way but if I um, all the time came out here was like let me just look at t-shirts you know I'm not I'm not entering into the magic of what's what is being asked of me right now what is the magic of what's going to happen right now like of what my intuition how it's trying to communicate to me in this moment and um, looking at that and um, having fun with that you always want to have fun that's always going to bring you I mean it's usually going to bring you okay I hear people coming and then um, so those are like a ladder and so you want to use them as steps but you don't stay staring at a step you know and like oh this was such an awesome step you know you keep going and so and then inside of that is the sacred silence and that's this inner inner space and when you did that worthiness video if you followed my other some of my other videos I talked about Aaron Doughty's video on worthiness um, it takes you sort of it can take you to the like, sacred silence you're talking to your higher self you learn how to get there you can learn how to get there in many ways but that's one of the ways oh it's just 27 27 all right, I wish you guys so much love in the video. Um, thanks for sitting here with the sunset with me. Thank you for listening. And I hope this helps you get out of these toxic behaviors because you don't have to stay in them. Um, write me comments if you want me to do a specific video on something. I'm like, don't write it too bad because you know the universe will give me that experience so that I know and I can authentically tell you like, this was so painful. I was so much in pain again, but, uh, I feel so much lighter and so much more full of life because you en enlighten yourself, enlight, enlight, bring more light in, and it lights up the way for you to take a higher path and just go on that and leave everything behind you. That's, that's what I'm saying. All right, much love.